Welcome back to Element 14 Presents, I'm Adam. Have you ever thought of an idea just so ridiculous it could work? That happened to me with this project. So in this video, I'm making a completely absurd cheese ball launcher. And not just any old cheese ball launcher that fires cheese balls, no. This is going to be a cheese ball launcher that tracks and fires cheese balls at your face. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. This idea kind of came to me when I was just laying on the couch, you know, watching some of my favorite Element 14 Presents episodes, when I realized, I am hungry. However, I do not want to move. How can we address this problem? which led me to this. In all seriousness, I knew I wanted to learn about face tracking turrets. I've seen several online projects that I thought were very interesting um, and some were just hilarious. However, to deliver food, you know, you either need to have a robot that's on wheels or possibly a drone or, you know, just something that can deliver food like that. However, for a stationary robot, the food would have to be launched. So you don't really want food just to be launched at one place, right? Like you don't want it just launched at a target. You want that food to be launched at your face. And logically, the easiest way to accomplish this would probably be a food that has a mostly spherical shape, which led me to cheese balls, as they are mostly spherical, not always, but mostly spherical, and tasty. However, I must point out that Clem offered a fantastic follow-up to this project. I think he said a, a chicken flinger? That sounds like an excellent idea for food projectiles. I want to see that. But cheese balls, since their shape and um, size is pretty similar to ping pong balls, they can have a launcher that's pretty similar to a ping pong ball launcher. And I actually made one of those several years ago. For the design of the launcher, like I said earlier, is going to be very similar to a ping pong ball launcher. The one that actually came to mind that I've used before is one with two spinning discs that the ball would fire between. And this same kind of launcher is actually frequently used for firing paper airplanes. That's um, where I've seen that design a lot. But this was my first idea for a launcher with spinning discs or cylinders to shoot ping pong balls or cheese balls. And as you will see later, I went through design after design of what I wanted. This was actually one of the first projects in a while that I wasn't going off of something else. I wasn't making a rock'em sock'em robot, whatever, you know, I'm. This is one of the first ideas that I had a really broad project definition, maybe. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a very broad goal. It was just to make a food launcher. I had a lot of room just to experiment and kind of figure out what I wanted to do. That's actually one of the reasons I'll touch on it later, why I chose AutoCAD. AutoCAD let me um, just try a lot of things. But uh, my first just draft, I guess, or my first proof of concept was just a spot with two DC motors and the spinners. And I had some spots for screws and maybe a little spot for a barrel, but that was about it for that first design. And that just kind of proved for like a proof of concept that yes, two spinning cylinders could fire cheese balls. However, I will note proper elastic material is I think necessary. Two spinning plastic cylinders kind of work, but that will smush cheese balls, which we don't want cheese dust everywhere. That is a mistake. <laughs> I have learned that is a mistake having cheese dust all over the workspace. So that elastic material, um, in this case, rubber bands, that allows for some compression, which is ideal. And for the dispenser, I was kind of just trying to find a pretty simple way because I'm not just dropping a cheese ball or a piece of food. I'm pushing it through the spinning cylinders and the dropping mech, it would kind of work. You know, if you just dropped a cheese ball, it would have to be like angled, you know, it had to be angled so that the ball would roll like down into the spinning cylinders, which would kind of work. But I found an easier option was just to have the cheese balls being pushed. So I accomplished that with a hopper that stacked several cheese balls on top of each other with an opening on one side for the cheese ball to be ejected and then another hole for a piece to push the cheese ball in and out and that would be controlled using a servo. So if one piece of plastic was all the way pushed in, the cheese ball would roll out, and when it was pushed all the way out, another cheese ball would fall down, ready to be ejected. So yeah, again, this would be accomplished with several 3D printed parts and a micro servo. And I later added a spring because the piece kept jamming and just wasn't really wanting to go through the hole every time. And once I added the spring, it guided the plastic piece through the hole. So that was a really nice solution. However, during this time of um, experimentation, I learned that the diameter of cheese balls vary drastically, which I found very surprising because I thought, you know, they're made in a factory that they should be pretty consistent. But at least the brand that I purchased, 
That diameter is just wildly different from cheese ball to cheese ball, which is just not ideal. When I need the initial velocity of each cheese ball, like, you know, that's being launched to be about the same. And if the diameter and mass, if they are significantly different, that would probably change the velocity. So one of the um, preconditions of using my launcher is that the cheese balls need to have a diameter of around 0.92 inches. So I'm choosing cheese balls to be launched that are all about the same because if not, this would just not be consistent at all. And I even made a little example in CAD for me to use in my designs of the launcher and for the hopper. The next part of this project was designing something to tilt the launcher in the X and Y axis. I also believe this is pitch and yaw in other terms. I mean, essentially all we needed to do is um, make something that can tilt the launcher up, down, um, left, and right. That's all it is. To accomplish this, I chose to use stepper motors because stepper motors, you know, they offer a, um, a great deal of precision um, also while offering a lot of torque. And for my design, I was actually kind of thinking of a theme park ride. I'm not sure the name of it, but it's that one where you like can sit down and it spins you um, like both in the X axis and the Y axis at the same time. I don't know what it's called. It's the one that looks like a hamster wheel kind of, um, but that's kind of what I was thinking of with this project. I ended up going with two stepper motors to, to tilt the entire assembly up and down and then one stepper motor at the base to pan everything left and right. I also designed a few mounts to screw on each stepper motor and um, mount to the launcher. And along with this, the, the two thirds massive circular mount had to be printed in three pieces. This is adding to the list of Element 14 Presents projects that I've had to like slice in some way or cut in some way because they're not gonna fit on my print bed or it's not gonna print well on my print bed um, because it's just so large. Again, in hindsight, I really don't know why I made this large of a mount, but there was no going back when I used this much filament. It was just so much. So there was no going back on that. So I, I kind of had to adjust for that, you know? I kind of had to make a few of the 3D printed mounts longer than necessary on those motors because it just needed to pick up for that large footprint. So they are a little longer than necessary, but it still works fine. And now, onto the electronics. For this project, I'm using a Pi 4 with OpenCV. I used OpenCV a few projects ago with my facial detection candy dispenser, and that worked pretty well, but um, that project I used, um, if you remember, it was an Adafruit stepper motor driver, which just was not ideal. Looking back, I'm like, that just was not a great choice. That driver is pretty good with um, at higher speeds, but in both this project and that last project, those stepper motors are moving pretty slow. So that's just not a great choice. And that's really why in the video, um, it was just super loud, those stepper motors. So in this project, I am going with completely different stepper motor drivers and I'm choosing the Trinamic 2208 drivers. They offer micro stepping and stealth chop, both of which I'm not using actually, but um, they're really common in 3D printers because they make the stepper motors so quiet. So I didn't really choose them for those features. They just seemed incredibly easy to use. Along with those drivers, we will also be incorporating an ultrasonic sensor to measure the distance you are away from the launcher and a um, micro servo for the dispenser. I'm not gonna go super into the specifics of how OpenCV works. There are lots of videos online addressing that. And I even briefly discuss it in my candy dispenser project. But I'm going to use a cascade to essentially find a face, then use the coordinates of that face to move the stepper motors. And a lot of these kinds of um, trackers, I guess, the camera is either mounted on or off the device. If it was mounted off the device, as long as you're in range of that camera, the device could move and find you. However, uh, there are some limitations to that. You know, the camera, the position of the camera from the launcher, that um, position would have to be constant because otherwise I wouldn't really know where to turn. The other way which I went with with this project is having the camera mounted on the launcher because it's much easier and it's much easier to transport because I don't have to worry about where the camera is set up. It's just set up on the device. And um, even the code I think is easier because it's just saying, you know, are you, if you're in the left of the frame, turn the launcher left until you are pretty close to the center. Or if you're, you know, in the lower um, part of the frame, you know, move it down and you'll be, you know, back in the center of the frame. So I think that's a really um, easier way to accomplish this. And it, uh, it turned out pretty well. This was also necessary for the ultrasonic sensor because I, I can't just have the ultrasonic sensor pointed in a general area like a camera could. You know, the ultrasonic sensor needs to be mounted on the device so it could actually find the distance 
of the person or whatever object it's pointed at. The other option to um, calculate the distance would be um, using photogrammetry, which I experimented a little with, or the way I actually spent more time on, which was using two cameras and treating them kind of like your eyes and using that to find the distance. Like, you know, kind of using um, uh, depth perception. But this just required way too much work for that pie to accomplish. And it was taking very long to um, calculate the distance. So I found, you know, along with the struggle the pie is gonna have to endure to track, it, it was gonna be a lot just to add on, you know, calculating the distance. So I found that using the ultrasonic sensor was just way easier and effective. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! In order to consistently allow the launcher to move and adjust and launch at the correct angle in order to land in my mouth, I need to measure the initial velocity. And I was thinking about it. Hypothetically, you could kind of figure that out by measuring the RPM of the motors and the motors on with the spinners on top. I mean, realistically, that's not gonna work because you know, the cheese balls actually, when it goes like through the two spinners, the RPM like plummets. So that's not gonna be really accurate because they're just not like, the RPM is not consistent enough to do that probably. What I ended up actually doing was I used a vernier motion detector, which actually acts very similar to an ultrasonic sensor, just far more accurate. So I first set this up and I used the base configuration of of 20 pulses per second and I found that the average velocity over a few trials to be around 1.3 meters per second. However, I realized a few limitations. I was worried the ball was just moving too fast for the sensor to accurately measure the position and um, you know find the velocity from that, especially due to that short distance. After a few trials I moved the sensor further back and um, maxed out the pulses per second. I'm going from 20 to um, 30 pulses per second so now we're getting more precision also. And then after those two changes I found that the velocity to be more around uh, 2.3 meters per second or 7.5 feet per second. However, I'm still not too sure that's very accurate because it's just such a small object for the Rainier sensor to detect. So it seems to have at least an initial velocity of 2.3 meters per second. And I also messed around a little bit with the motor power consumption. A lot of my tests were run at about a watt and I upped it to a watt and a half just to see if it had a higher or a greater initial velocity. But it, I, I didn't really find that. I found the spinners were moving faster. Like they were, like you could just see that they were moving faster. Um, but once the ball actually went through the spinners, um, the initial velocity was about the same, or at least how the Rainier sensor read it. The, um, the Rainier sensor like, found, I think it was around two to three tenths of a, um, a meter uh, greater, like meter per second, but it wasn't very significant. <music> Lastly, the math of launching cheese balls. A phrase I would never think I would say let it happen in this project. So we have the coordinates and we have the position of our face. And since we are using projectiles, the distance away from the target is a really handy thing to have. However, in this project, we are kind of in a gray area. Most other face tracking devices that are on the internet are like shooting water or a liquid at a really high speed or just using a laser. And those kind of face trackers don't really have to deal with the ballistics or the end behavior of the projectile because if they fire at a given position, it'll probably end up there. But this project isn't really like other launchers either, like the launchers that fire at a really low speed or at a really great distance, where the angle of the launch is really important. My launcher is kind of between that. Those DC motors just spin incredibly fast. So those cheese balls are firing very fast. You know, the sensor actually clocked it at around 2.3 meters per second or seven and a half feet per second. So it's gonna kind of take a long time for that parabola of the cheese ball to actually be important. Another thing that I would not guess I would say in my life, a parabola of a cheese ball. So in, um, in my code, I'm not really doing the exact physics necessary for this. That would require far more math and a more reliable launcher for the math to actually be impactful. I'm using kind of a variation of an equation um, usually used for projectiles in physics. It allows me to not have to worry about the drag and the lift forces because the initial velocity is just very high and it's not traveling a great distance either, you know? My goal is around eight-ish feet away for the launcher to be reliable. 
Oh, the problems and mistakes of this project. There are so many. From just drilling too many holes um, right next to each other uh, on, a, on a massive 3D print that had like a really low infill that made the whole print snap in half. That was a really sad time. <laughs> Uh, to me mysteriously frying one of these step motor drivers. And I think I actually kind of found that problem. You know, I think I actually might have bridged the motor voltage and ground for like a very short period of time. But it also, the driver did not overheat, it didn't spark, which is why I was like, did I really fry it? You know, did that really happen? <laughs> I did some research trying to figure out why it wasn't working. And I found that a lot of these um, Trinamic step motor drivers have some kind of um, short protection. However, after just lots of research, I could not figure out how to re-enable this. You know, from just switching, like turning on and off the, um, the enable pin, it just, it was not working. So I just had to um, order a few just in case. And then lastly, even the tracker, it kept ignoring my face and it kept choosing to identify um, Bob from Bob's Burgers on my shirt instead. So this is just a reminder that if you have a lot of temporary problems in your projects, you are not alone. <laughs> It's done. <laughs> it's, it's so wonderful. When it works, it is wonderful. I only got a few takes of it actually, me being able to catch it. And I think that's partly my fault because I am not the person when someone throws it like a piece of popcorn at, I can usually catch it. So there were a few times that I got it and I was so happy when I did. You'll probably notice that uh, in all the other clips, I used a different webcam. I used a brand new webcam that I, uh, I purchased and it worked very well before I actually um, used the DC motors with it. Um, you know, for before this, all of the tracking that I had done, I hadn't had the DC motors on because I was focused on, you know, making sure it was tracking to my face. However, I probably should have done that because there is something going on with that camera and vibration. Because when those um, motors were spinning and it was like slightly shaking the platform, that camera kept giving a error for OpenCV that it wasn't connected. And I was so confused and I kept switching USB ports, but it kept giving the same air unless I turned off the motors. I tried a different webcam. I only had one in the house that was not those and it was a super old, I think it's from the 90s. It's very old, but it, it worked very well. Like it, had, it has such bad resolution, but it worked. It proved that the problem resided in the camera, which I, I'm very happy about because I was really worried that I was gonna have to grab a different Pi and reinstall OpenCV and see if that was the problem. But I was so happy that it was not. This project has been incredible. I, I'm so happy that it actually works and it pays off. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the shots aren't um, headshots. A lot of them are body or, um, well, they're body shots or headshots that I can't um, catch. Again, it, it definitely needs to be tweaked further, but um, it, it worked well. If you have any idea about food projectiles or um, launcher or uh, turret you've considered making, um, let me know at the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. I'll see you next time.